This is an Audi ESC version 4.1. Now you've already got the version 3.5, 3.6. They're all based on um, the O-Drive uh, open source firmware. This will handle 56 volts, 50 amps continual, 120 amps burst, which equates to 6.7 kilowatts, I think it is, on that little package. I've got to change these connectors. Uh, I put that XT60 on, it doesn't come with that. I've got to change these because it's got lead free on it and I don't like lead free because it's brittle. It also comes with a, um, a braking resistor and a couple of wires which I'll go through in a future video and it doesn't come with heat shrink on the phase wires. Now, as a comparison, this is a phase runner which will handle 72 volts, 96 amps. I think the 96 amps is actually peak not continual. Uh, obviously this has got all the proprietary connectors on it that you can do this that are plug into the cycle analyst and and everything else so it does make wiring up to that a lot easier. This doesn't come with any interface. There's nothing you can plug into it that will just give you any readings. Uh, not even a laptop, nothing. It's all done by software like the command line interface so you have to install Python, you have to install um, the, I can't remember what it's called, software. <laughs> but it's all done through command line through that USB-C connector. Because these things, or O-Drive, is actually open source, there's a lot of documentation about these things. So all the command line interface and everything else, I've got all the details. Now it's got GPIO ports and everything else, so it can actually combine with whatever I want to plug into it. I can get all the readings off this. It's got current sensors and everything else as you normally would. Let's do a weight comparison. This is the phase runner. That weighs 291.1 grams. This one with... Oh, hang on. This one with the leads... Oh, yes. Um, I'm going to show this in a, in a future video. Yes, it is something coming, and it's going to be very exciting. I'm just going to use this as a platform, just to weigh this. That weighs 81.5 grams. Now, there's no extra cooling needed, although you might want to put a fan on there, just to make damn sure it keeps cool. So this is going to be fitting into my new scooter, because I'm not 100% happy with the controller that's in it. I don't think I'll ever be happy with the default controllers, I've always got a tinker, but this will tie up perfectly with that. This isn't the latest design. The latest one is coming along nicely, which will handle 500 amps, believe it or not, when it's finished. Uh, this is only a 10S version. I'm currently working on the 20S version at 500 amps. So, I'm going to take the scooter apart. I'm going to take the original controller out, and I'm going to start fitting this. There is a lot of fettling that you have to do with these things. It's not just a plug and play sort of thing. You have to know what you're doing. I'm going to try and make it a lot easier for people that if you want to plug this in, I'm going to make it a lot easier for you because I'm going to give you all the information beforehand. Now, wiring throttles up and everything else, it's got all the inputs and the outputs and everything that you need. So it should, it should, in theory, be pretty straightforward. These come from Secure. Uh, the ones who supply the spot weld, the soldering iron, screwdrivers and everything else. I haven't tested the screwdriver. I'm going to leave a link in the description. They are pricey in comparison to a normal controller, but they're not in comparison to that. They're 400 quid. I think these are about 120. I've got a lot of high hopes for this to tie in with that. So as the two will combine and I can limit the power, I can limit the, the input, the output, charge capabilities, absolutely everything to monitor all the whole thing as a single unit rather than having to piss around and plug multiple things into this, that and the other, multiple displays, multiple USB leads, all you'll need is one.